from front toss, live BP, whatever it is, or putting the work as uh, in the work as a baseball player in general, guess what? They're never going to reach their full potential because they're late. <laughs> Hey guys, real quick before we get into this video, I wanna show you the best batting tee ever invented. It's gonna be the last tee that you ever own in your life. It's the Cage Pro Tee. It's a pro style batting tee. In fact, I sell them on UGO Pro Baseball. We've got three different options. We've got the Cage Pro Classic right back here with a 10 pound weight at the bottom. We've got the Cage Pro Travel with a five pound weight on the bottom. And then we've got the Cage Pro Shorty down here. If you're working on that low pitch, you're a pro guy, college guy, high school guy, hey, maybe you've got a T-ball team or a little league team and you want those guys to swing the, off of the best tee. You get that Cage Pro shorty check it out the bottom unscrews it's an awesome tee super durable and the best part about it is it's a pivot action top guys miss hitting the ball are not going to knock the tee down it's going to last so much longer by far the best tee on the market you don't believe me go to yougoprobaseball.com go get you one and i'll give you a money back guarantee if you don't love it send it back to me i'll send you a full refund thank you so much to cage pro for sponsoring this video let's get right into it in this video i'm going to tell you the truth about hitting drills chances are you came across my channel because you typed in baseball hitting drill somewhere down the line over the last 15 years. But let's tell the truth about hitting drills. You know, some people say, oh, they're gimmicky. Why do you need them? Why do you need to do these silly things? On the other end of the spectrum, other guys love them and use them all the time. So in this video, I wanna clarify a few things, break a few things down and tell you the truth about hitting drills. The way I like to think about it is there's three areas, three things that you gotta think about. There's skill level, there's genetics, and then there's effort, right? You can have none of the three, you can have one of the three, two of the three, or all three of them, right? Some guys have the skill, they have the genetics, but they are lazy and they don't put in the work, right? So if they have the skill and the genetics and they're lazy, but they don't put in the work, they don't get their hitting in, whether it's hitting drills or just hitting from front toss, live BP, whatever it is, or putting the work as in the work as a baseball player in general, guess what? They're never gonna reach their full potential because they're too lazy. Say a guy has genetics and he has effort, but he's got a terrible swing, guess what? This guy could really benefit from a coach helping him with some hitting drills, right? It makes sense. If, if the guy's working on his mechanics and understanding, trying to learn new ideas, and he's really, he's got the effort, he's willing to put in the work, and he's coachable. Let's coach him. Let's, let's give him some things to try to challenge him. Let's get him to feel some things with some hitting drills. Obviously, we're still gonna get in our live hitting, we're getting our front toss, we're getting our live BP, we're gonna get in, get in our live at-bats, right? We still, obviously, all this matters. Although we talk about a lot in the videos, about hitting off the tee and doing certain drills to feel certain things. The way you should think about hitting drills are like prescriptions to an illness. Like if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, you're sick, this type of sick, he's gonna give you this type of medicine. Same thing with hitting. Hey, you're casting your hands, you're really long in your swing. We're gonna do these certain types of hitting drills. Not every single hitting drill is made for every single player, right? Makes sense. So that type of guy would benefit highly from challenging with him with different hitting drills that are good for his type of swing that he's working on, right? Makes sense, okay. The next type of guy is the skill and effort guy. He's got the skills and he's willing to put in the work, right? But maybe he's a smaller guy, right? So he's the type of guy who's gotta learn the game and know the game the best of his ability because he doesn't, maybe he's a five foot four guy and that's as big as he's gonna get. Okay, nothing wrong with that. You just have to know that. You have to have the self-awareness and know what type of player you are. Guess what? That type of guy is probably not gonna be working on launch angle and bat speed and power. No, he's gotta work on bat control, placing that ball every single play. So hit it, certain hitting drills might work for that guy, right? But you have to have the self-awareness, knowing what type of player you are so you can grow and progress as a player and play at the highest level. Because I know I had a lot of teammates. In fact, I made a video with one of my teammates from Auburn University who was a smaller guy and he became a starting outfielder at Auburn University, right? Never would have thought. Guy was very small. I'll leave a link down below where you can watch that video. If you're a shorter guy, definitely check out that video. Very cool story, very inspirational. And then, of course, if you're that guy who has all three, you have the genetics. You're going to be a giant. You have the skill. You're a natural athlete and you have that work ethic. You're willing to put in the work and do whatever it takes, the determination, the discipline, do whatever it takes to play at the highest level. Guess what? Those guys are major leaguers. That's what it's about. Now, skill level ranges, right? You can have a highly skilled player, but then you could have an absolute stud superstar, right? So you also have to know self-awareness is huge when it comes to how, where you are in those three 
those three areas where you are level-wise within each of those three. Know what type of player you are, put in the work. Coming full circle back around to hitting drills. No, just no, understand, right? And if you're a guy who needs this, who needs hitting drills, you have certain swing flaws. Maybe you're getting long, maybe you're pulling your head, maybe you're, you're collapsing your front knee. You know, there's many different swing flaws out there. Understand the game, right? Understand the game, understand what it is that you need to work on and get better all the time. One thing that you cannot be, well, I guess you can, but one thing you should not be if you, want, if you have aspirations to play at the highest level is the effort level can't be lacking. I mean, if you want, if you have those aspirations, you gotta be willing to put in the work, right? You can't just watch this video and say, hey, I'm better now. No, you gotta actually go out there and put in the work, put in the swings, put in the time, okay? Have that discipline and effort. The last thing I wanna leave you with is an acronym. I call it SMASH, okay? I'm gonna tell you what SMASH stands for. The S is student of the game. You have to learn as much as you can about this game. In fact, I learned so much more about this game after I got done playing. I wish I would have known what I know now when I was playing. That's called hindsight. But if you can start putting in the effort now to learn as much as you can and be a student of the game, you're gonna be a lot more successful. So start learning now. It's never too early to start learning the game properly. The M is for master of feel. What that means to me is the best players in the game have great feel, meaning when they take a swing, they can feel, they have that this visceral sense, they have this understanding of what their body just did so that they can make adjustments quicker, right? Guys who don't have any feel, it's harder for them to make adjustments. The coach will say, hey, what'd you feel there? And they're like, I don't know. Or they'll do something, they have no clue of what their body just did, so it's hard to make adjustments. So when you can really be in tune with your body and what it's doing and become a master of feel, you're gonna be able to make adjustments quicker and then these hitting drills or whatever you're working on, is going to speed up the process of development. You're going to be able to develop faster, be a better player quicker, right? So you got to be a master of feel. Student of the game, master of fear, feel. A is attacker of fear. What does that mean? Fernando Cortez was on the channel, former major leaguer. He said it best. He said it the best I've ever heard it. Is you got two options when something happens. Let's say you boot the ball. He was a middle infielder, major league middle infielder. Let's say you boot the ball, right? You make an error. You've got two options the next play or the rest of the game. One. You can hide from the ball the rest of the game, or you can, too, attack that fear. You can say, hit it to me. I want this next ball, right? What happens is, a lot of times, and I did this, too, this is normal, so if it's happening to you, understand that it's normal. When you let that fear overtake you, you start to freeze. And guess what? A lot of times, that ball finds you next, and you're playing tight. You're not playing free. You're like, oh, I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to make a mistake. You're afraid of failure, right? You're, you're letting that fear conquer you. On the other hand of the spectrum, if you say, hey, even though you don't feel this way, you never feel this way, but you gotta trick your mind and say, hey, I want this ball hit to me next. I'm gonna make a good play this next one. Hey, I got you guys, I got this one, hit it to me, here we go. When you have that mindset, guess what? When that ball is hit to you, you're gonna be a little bit more relaxed, okay? It takes time, don't, don't get me wrong, you can't just say that and not believe it. You gotta kinda trick yourself to believe it, okay? So that's student of the game. Master of feel, attacker of fear. Next S is seeker of victory. That's the next S, seeker of victory. What does that mean? We wanna win, right? You wanna be competitive. Nick Shaw and I did a great video talking about competitiveness and how some of the best players in the game are ultra competitive. We wanna win at all costs, right? That is part of the game. And I think if you are a seeker of victory, right? Seeker of winning, then you're gonna have that competitiveness. You're gonna want to win all the time. And when you do that, you're gonna find a way. The guys who are super competitive find a way. So you have to be able to find a way to win, right? Whether you got a stud on the mound that's pitching to you, right? And you're up here, you, you gotta understand like, hey, I don't know this guy. I've never faced anyone throwing this fast before, but I am a seeker of victory. I want to win. I want to beat this guy with everything in my body, my whole soul, my mind, and just being that competitor and wanting to do it. When you can approach the game that way, you're gonna have a lot more success. And then the H, S-M-A-S-H, to sell smash. Student of the game, master of feel, attacker of fear, seeker of victory, and H, hardest worker in the room. I stole this one from The Rock, shout out Dwayne. Hardest worker in the room, right? If you can be the hardest worker in any room that you walk into, any field that you walk out onto, guess what? You're putting in that work and that kind of Full circle again, goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning of this video, and that's you know having the skill, the genes, the genetics, and that effort level, right? That's the third one, the effort level. If you can be the hardest one, worker in the room, hardest worker at the field, hardest worker on your team, and every time you assess yourself, 
and say, oh man, Billy, he was killing it, man. That guy works hard. And then you could tell yourself, hey, I need to work harder than Billy. And if you have better skills and better genetics than Billy, guess what? You're gonna progress faster than Billy. You're gonna be better than Billy. But you gotta have that competitiveness. So that's smash. That's the truth about hitting drills. You gotta have that self-awareness. I know I said a whole bunch of random stuff in this video. Hopefully some of it clicked with certain people that are watching this. If it did, share it. You know, I think it's all good information. I think it's motivational. All I want to do is put out the best information that I can, that I know. When I'm talking about hitting drills and it's a hitting drill specific video, I'm not saying everybody should do that hitting drill, okay? A lot of this game is mental stuff. A lot of this game is stuff that we talked about here in this video, okay? So understand what type of player you are, what type of work you need to put in, and go get it done. If you want it, go get it done. Stop watching YouTube videos, get out there and play some baseball. Thank you so much, guys. I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. I'll chat with you, we'll talk down there. Thank you.